What is going on? You are listening and watching Tags Live. Uh, talk about gay sex, the live version. I'm your host, Steve V. With this is episode 269, alongside my co-host, Cody Maurice Doggett. How are you? Hello, darling. Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. Exactly. Happy Pride Month. Yes. We are also on Instagram Live as giving uh, the Instagrammers our first segment of Tags Live. And just so you guys know, every <laughs> Wednesday night we're doing this on the Get Vocal platform. It's a lot of fun. Um, let's get it right into it. So last yesterday i had a big big day as i was I on no tell me all about it yeah so i was on the wendy williams show and wendy williams if, if any of you guys watch it uh, has had a hasn't had a studio audience so yesterday was the first day that they had a real audience back into the studio and I live literally a block away from the studio. So I was like, I've got to go there. And I was really excited to go to be the first, one of the first people in the studio mm -hmm. audience for a lot of reasons. Also because we are shooting, we just shot our own TV pilot for Tag's podcast, uh, yeah. actually a year and a half ago, and we're starting to shop it. And we took a little bit of inspiration from Wendy Williams and Ask Wendy, and <laughs> which is the reason I wanted to go on at, uh, Wendy Williams yesterday. And it was really interesting because they brought us all in and they really have almost okay. everybody write out a question to see if they anybody has a quest question for wendy mm -hmm. and so they picked about 10 of us to go over to talk to a producer to share our story and what we ended up uh doing was they picked only two of us so and you got to ask wendy well no so they brought us to the producer to okay. say you know we're only going to pick um, so many and out of 10 okay. of us they, they liked my question and they liked this woman's question oh my god and, and that's amazing the, the producer essentially was like i really think i love this question about so my question essentially was hey wendy in case you didn't see it uh during the heart of the pandemic um <laughs> I was in my building and I wasn't obviously going out anywhere. So I met a guy, a neighbor of mine in my building and we flirted and ultimately hooked up and went on and dated for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. it, ult it ultimately didn't work out, but we're still friendly. I, I said we're still friendly because we still have to see each other in the elevator. Turns out we're... <laughs> BFF friends practically right Aww. now, which, which so I, I left that part out because I wanted to make it a little juicier for the show. I yeah. said, now as things are starting to open up, I asked Wendy, there's another guy. And that's when the audience literally was like laughing because like, really, you can't keep it out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, lately, I've been giving eyes, you know, with the mask and all to this other guy. And, uh -huh. he, and I see him in the gym. And I feel like we have a connection. And we've been chit chatting here and there. Wendy, or I'll ask you, Cody, should oh. I, oh. since things are opening up, I want to get your room, should I ask this guy out? Or should I keep it out of the building since you know, I do I really need to be dating every gay guy that lives in my building? And now that things are opening up, should I just really keep it outside of the building? What was your take on it? Well, and I'll tell you what Wendy said. You know? Okay, all right. Well, first, before we know what Miss Wendy says, I don't want to go against anything that she says. But um, I personally would, if you have a connection with this guy, you're making eyes at each other, I don't see the problem with, because you never know, you only live once. Is take the chance, and then if it doesn't work out, make sure you nip it in the bud as quickly as possible. Exactly, exactly. That sounds good, Cody. Just making sure you're you're you have the right audio on. Do you check that? Oh, let me check. Just in case, I'm not sure if you do or not. Your microphone. 
Okay. Okay. Well, I uh, love that. I love what you said, and I'm going to tell you, Wendy actually said the, her whole response was actually really thoughtful, and she kept saying my name, Steve V, which was really made me happy. She she actually found it relevant because she said, you know, living in her building, too, she sees a lot of guys, and she's kind of been giving the eye as well, and it's very tempting to want to, like, flirt, but she said in the event that it doesn't work out, People are throwing things, banging on your, it could get really dramatic. And so she said, ultimately, she thinks to avoid keeping it messy, that I should just start dating somebody outside of the building. Oh, very wise. Very, very wise. Yeah. I mean, either way you go, is that better? You're much better. Okay. Either way you go, you can't go wrong. But you make sure that you don't, you don't take it too far, is what I say, if, if there's not a connection. Yeah. And you know what? Um, you know, and it was all fun for TV. And let me just mm -hmm. tell you, it was so fun being on that set. And so everybody was so cool. And they really kind of help you hone your question in. Oh, and, really? And take your beats and you rehearse it backstage. It was so fun. Um, it was on yesterday's Tuesdays, Wendy Williams, I ask Wendy, or if you follow us on tags podcast at tags podcast you'll see my whole question um and how it went it was super super fun but to your point cody i think that my real connection with this guy actually he's so mm -hmm. friendly and sweet that to be honest as we have a pretty cool rooftop rooftop deck okay. in our building mm -hmm. i think i would actually just ask him for to meet up as a friendly kind of gesture on our roof deck sometime soon that because, is not where my mind went automatically well, I mean, <laughs> well, you know i mean if it turns into something more but i think because he's such a nice guy i think it would be actually kind of fun to just get to know him a little bit without the pressure of, hey, do you want to go on a date type of thing? Yeah. And I think if I do that, I'll be good. Um, yeah. Thank you, Spark6973. I looked hot. Oh, that's really nice. He might also not be single. Okay, so good question. We're also Instagramming Ooh, live, Dr. you guys. Lulu is coming with the heat. So, oh, that was Dr. Lulu? So, yes, it was. But you know Dr. Lulu. Dr. Lulu we know from Clubhouse joining our Clubhouse room, uh, Sex Positivity. Yes. And the thing I've noticed about him, though, is – He's always alone in the gym. I've mm -hmm. seen him come from the store carrying a bag by himself. The energy between us, every time I see him, he keeps, you know, body language. He keeps, he made a point the other day to kind of redirect his shoulders and energy to kind of stop me because I, I can't. To entice you? Ooh. Or just, <laughs> he, he, it was, I was walking in the building. He was at the front desk and I can't uh -huh. see for at all very far without my glasses on so it was kind of one of those where he made a point to kind of maneuver his shoulders to kind of not block me but stop me oh yeah <laughs> i was gonna say cock block but no he wasn't <laughs> it may have been the opposite of that and so, he blocked you with his cock for, yeah, for uh, I, I wanted him to <laughs> right the opposite of cock block so we'll see um but I loved being on yeah, Wendy keep Williams. Us, I'll keep you posted. Keep I'll... us posted. We want to know what goes on in the building. I feel like this is like Melrose Place. Like <laughs> this is a... <laughs> <laughs> the new improved Melrose Place, the gay edition is yeah, what I'm right. living in. Um, yeah. And we'll see. I mean, I actually went on a proper date of somebody I met, believe it or not, outside of my building recently. And it was a really good date. Like we had great conversation, nice. but you know, like I make my sister laugh is us gays. Uh -huh. Some of us, I should just speak for myself. Yeah. Um, this gay has been known to it. And, and in this situation to have, to go home with somebody, spend the night, have some sort of sex and then realize after all of that that I ultimately want to go on a date with this person. Do you know? Oh. Do you find that's a thing? And have you ever found yourself in that where you, Cody Maurice Daggett, where you <laughs> you get the sex out of the way and then you realize actually he's kind of date worthy. That's how I got my boyfriend. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, my straight heterosexual sister who's an ally to the LGBTQ world says that she thinks it's really efficient in it a is. lot of ways. It gets I mean, that out of the way, you know? Yeah. Totally is. Like, you don't have to wonder if it's going to be good or you have a sexual connection. You just, you, you kind of know on the first date. So, and it's, you know what, take, play it by ear. Every situation is different. You know, if you feel like having sex on the first date, don't judge yourself for it. If you want to wait a couple dates, then that's perfectly fine and, as well. And Cody, not to stop you, somebody said, um, it's a thing. That's how I met my, I married mine. Uh, I, I'm. Let me see where that was. Oh, coaching by Josh says it's a thing. I ended up marrying mine. Okay, see, uh, Lucky Lucas says that's how I got my partner of yep. three years now. So it is um, kind of a thing. I wonder what Dr. Lula thinks about sleeping with somebody <laughs> before. <laughs> I kind of know what our our other host um, on. Sebastian Lacaz would think he would probably oh. be against it. I'm sure. <laughs> it's about conserving his energy, Sebastian. I love that. He and, is. and like, you know what? No judgment. Everything, as long as it's comfortable for you. So yeah, it's just so funny with this the ask Wendy comment and the guy, this new guy in my building. I mm -hmm. honestly, I made it juicy for the show for Wendy Williams. Yeah. However, I honestly think. He's a really nice guy, and I, it's not even sexual energy. It's just I kind of wouldn't mind to get to know him a little bit more. And that could just be a friendly cocktail on the roof deck. Yeah. Like maybe the one I'm drinking right now, which is oh. a <laughs> Baral Spritz. <laughs> oh, I was going to so. say maybe you, I could join you, but no, that's not. A, no, not. I'm not. That's not what we're going to do. You guys enjoy your time together. I love it. I love it. Well, we did mention it's Pride Month and we couldn't help but talk about a lot is happening. And and since did you feel cheated last year with the, the pandemic and didn't really get to celebrate Pride Month? I mean, you could always be prideful, but yeah. we didn't really get a Pride Month. And yeah, there were virtual prides. There were things of that nature. But as far as the the partying and the going to the parade and that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. You know, I have to shout out, though, to our current president, President Joe Biden, who began Pride Month with a proclamation and he acknowledged he recognized June as LGBTQ Pride Month. And this hasn't been done since Obama. And I remember I had a friend or my dear friend in L.A. who went to the very first ever LGBTQ plus proclamation held at the White oh, wow. House of all places. Um, but Biden really said there's still more work to be done. And he has a huge population of LGBTQ plus in his staff working with him. Yeah, he does. Um, including uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg mm -hmm. uh, and Assistant Health Secretary Dr. Rachel Levine. There's more, of course, but I really liked what he said. Um, there's more work to, to be done and the right for LGBTQ Americans um, is is still, there's still a lot of work and we can only see it, Cody. We were talking offline, the amount of hate crimes that are happening all over. I mean, we were just going back and forth with a lot of them, mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't help but notice this interesting story that happened in, or I think it was in the state of Washington. Did you hear about this story, Cody? I didn't hear about that. Tell me about, about it's it's a lake, um, Moses Lake, where a, a bunch of boaters, they were all on two different boats. Were oh, I did hear about this. I didn't know it was in Washington, though. I think it was. If you could look that up just to confirm okay. that. But Moses Lake boaters allegedly harassed another group over gay pride flags. And then their boat burst into flames, if you can believe it. Um Yes, I am in New York City and my windows are open. <laughs> so over essentially the story, this is such an interesting story. So essentially there was, imagine two boats in this lake. One of them was minding their own business and had a gay pride flag floating away. And another boat 
these are small bones, mind you, mm-hmm. coasted by it, saw the pride flag, did not like what they were seeing. One of them girl flipped them off. They were shouting out slurs at the the other boat. And ultimately that boat sped around the one with the LGBTQ flag, the pride flag. And believe it or not, and it's still unbeknownst, so they're, they're investigating it. That boat blew up in the middle of the ocean. I mean, talk about karma, mm-hmm. as Cody was saying. They all yeah. were fine, though. They lived, and it wasn't that. However, who came to their rescue was the boat flying the pride flag and saved their asses, literally, and got them to safety. You know what the crazy part about this whole story was? As they documented saving these crazies, these homophobic guys or people, mm-hmm. that they lit up a, a vape cigarette as they're saving them. And to, a, a couple of the passengers on the LGBTQ boat had asthma. And so... They didn't consider what? that. I don't even know that they really thanked them. It didn't go into great deal about all of that. But if you ever, if that's not a pride story for you to overcome those that are coming at you with slurs to then save their lives, that yeah. to me is the pride story of the summer. And actually, it's such a great story. Of the decade, actually. Of the decade. I, I, because, like you said, karma is a bitch, and she will come right after you. And I saw, I definitely saw the video of the woman flicking them off, and then you just see this boat burst into flames afterward. It's so gratifying to see that. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit vindictive, but it was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was good yeah. to see. It was. It really gave me... Um, a prideful moment, I think, for our community just to see that, you know... That they rose above. The yeah. Hands. And you never know. I mean, we all say we're going to... When you see something, say something. Or when you see an atrocity happen, how are you really going to act? And I mm-hmm. give it up to them for doing the the hum, humane thing of helping these guys out, even though they could care less about their lifestyle and and made it all about slurs and i just think wow this is such a great example for our community um coaching by just says the resilience of our community amazing absolutely um lucky lucas says i hope the homophobes took a look in the mirror afterwards yeah really the fact that they could even look in the mirror now that they were their asses were saved exactly so yeah. absolutely i love that story um there's a couple other stories that we wanted to get to should we, what do you want to talk about the bar the q new bar or jack McEnroe? cody Let's before talk about jack McEnroe. because okay <laughs> <laughs> or should we keep it on a uh on a more positive a... more hopeful <laughs> uh <laughs> vibe that we got going on here let's keep it on a uh, an uplifting one where it's just more of an okay. announcement um and we will get to it in our third segment um and hopefully yes. some of you guys will come over to our get vocal platform um we just wanted to make an announcement that it's really cool that as things are opening up there's a brand new bar club space called in, in when you guys come to new york city it's going to be called club q and the investors are the likes um do you have the space do you have it in front of you cody mm, i could pull it up really quick yeah so zachary quinto as you guys know charlie carver who i really love um such an adorable guy, great actor, Jake Shears of Scissor Sisters, and of course, the one and only Billy Porter, are just four of the famous uh, celebrities, gay th- celebrities, that will be part of this brand new four-story complex on 8th Avenue in Hell's Kitchen. Um, they're hoping that the doors will open for Pride on the weekend. Yeah. Yep. 
And they're all, I think it's really a, an empowering example. They're going to obviously have a club space in there, dancing and DJs and all that. But they're also going to have a cabaret moment in there and probably some oh, other great things going on. That's fabulous. Well, you know, you can't have Billy Porter and, and <laughs> in there and not have a cabaret moment. Come on now. I hope and to so, see him on stage singing and because that would just give need every time billy porter sings it just fills my soul so yeah he's got new music coming out uh he this does. summer he does. he's gonna be he's going to be the fairy godmother in cinderella as well absolutely so there are a lot of ways on happy pride month uh let us know we're gonna switch it over to our get vocal platform exclusively yeah. right now but you guys can join us it's totally free um and cody i think put the link in there but we want to thank you yeah. hopefully we'll see you otherwise this show gets repackaged and is available tomorrow wherever you get your podcast so thanks guys it's been a lot of fun and thank on you instagram guys. live thank we're gonna instagram say later yeah yeah ciao 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 Awesome, awesome. And I see my armpit on Get Vocal. Oh, hey, there you go. You got a nice armpit. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> so, all right, it's time for our segment that we started um, that I got the inspiration from uh, mm -hmm. a friend of mine down the hall called Vulnerable Voices. And the it is the segment that we started when we started last summer that we get a little bit deeper. And I thought the word came to my mind. I heard it somewhere the, uh, the other day, but it's all about validation. And so we're talking about validation today on vulnerable voices. And at first, just what does that word mean to you, Cody, when you first hear that? I mean, we had some examples and we'll get into them in a minute, but I just, what does validation mean to you? Maybe link it up with Pride Month. Um, it just means when you are someone outside of yourself well, or inside of yourself really just puts that stamp of approval on you or makes you feel seen makes you seen. feel i was just gonna say that scene because pride month is about visibility and being seen for our community yeah, yeah and it makes you feel like you are understood and that that you are known that someone knows you in this world and you're not all alone so that's what validation means to me. Yeah, it's really interesting because yesterday on our clubhouse, and we have a clubhouse on, if you guys are not on it, you should check it out. Our clubhouse room is every Tuesday night from, it's we start about 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, and mm -hmm. it's about LGBTQ plus uh, sex positivity. So in there, I was sharing on there last night on, and it's every Tuesday night. So I was talking about Wendy Williams again, because I was going to share with my mom, my mom, I said, mom, I'm on Wendy Williams. And I says, but I'm asking for dating advice on there. And from guys, and I came out to my mom kind of later in life, actually, like, oh, yeah two three years ago now so my mom is now 80 gonna be 84 so it took me a while to with catholicism growing up that way with mm -hmm. not knowing how my parents would react knowing my parents were of a different generation but when i ultimately did it was so cathartic when i ultimately did and to hear her accept me and say how much she loved me and it didn't matter was yeah. such an amazing moment that I cherish with me. But Aww. I did want a reminder that, you know, I was asking for advice, dating advice from about for another guy that I wanted to date, date on Ooh. the Wendy Williams show. Uh huh. And how did she Be react? She, I don't, I think it went over her head and she was like, okay. I'm going to call your two aunts. Well, she ended up calling me later and loved the segment. Mm -hmm. And said, but I'm glad I watched it before because before um, because I think your one aunt is totally cool with it, but I think your other aunt is so conservative, and I'm not sure how she would react to it. So I'm glad I didn't send it to her, and I totally agreed with her, but I couldn't help but think, oh, it comes back sometimes to 
our sexuality and acceptance and being mm -hmm. seen. And we had a really good conversation and I totally got it where, where she was coming from. And I don't, mm -hmm. it's more important that my mother knows and accepts me than yeah. my aunt that I know is probably going to be a lot more conservative. Um, but it still crossed my mind on yeah. the, being seen and how she didn't want to share it with certain people. Um, I think ultimately I slept on it and I feel good that I'm so happy that my mom knows, but it being validated for me, you can't always, you can't always expect validation. Yeah. You can hope for it though. Yeah. I agree with you. I'm on the same vein. A lot of my, uh, older family members do not know everybody that's my age or maybe like the generation right ab above me they all know they're all very accepting but it's when you get to the older people they're a little bit more set in their ways they're they are, were raised in the church you mentioned catholicism they're yeah. raised in the church and it's a lot harder for them to disassociate themselves from that and to really see uh that our sexuality doesn't isn't the totality of us and that it's not really a sin like a god that loves you is it, he made me this way at the end of the day and that's what i believe and that's what i know and so honestly i've come to terms with that with not needing their validation but it would like you were saying it would be nice to be seen by them Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. it's always something that passes my mind on, particularly in a month like this for Pride Month. But uh, I'm curious to know, though, in a relationship, okay. because one of our notes that we wanted to cover was mm -hmm. validation in relationships and being in a new relationship. I okay. know when I've been in relationships, it's important that whoever I'm with validates what I do, not approves or but validates and sees what I'm doing. And I'm, of course, going to see what they're doing and validate their work. What, whether are we it, talking it, about, well, are we talking about specific inside or outside of the bedroom is what I want we're to know. Talk about them in a second. <laughs> but first, I want to just hear about validation with just, you know, like, do you get validation with, your new boyfriend about yes. being a co-host on a show that talks about gay sexuality. Oh yeah. We're totally supportive of one another and our decisions and just what our, our goals and our passions are. That's, and that's extremely validating. And it it makes me feel like he gets me. Yeah. And, and it's really important. I, I've always wanted to date somebody creative, so it's it's really solidifies a lot that he is so creative and he understands my perspective and my point of view. And <laughs> I asked him <laughs> what I could what I could talk about on this show, and he said, "Yeah, anything. Just talk about anything." And I'm like, "Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. Don't get crazy, Steve. Don't get crazy." <laughs> it's it's it's. It's great because I think you talked about it. There was a couple of people on our, our clubhouse last night that said, uh -huh. we only want to be together. On, like somebody said in our room that they only want to be in a relationship with somebody that they make that commitment that let's only do this while we are feeling like we're getting what we need out of this relationship. When we don't feel that anymore, that's the time that we need to kind of talk to each other. And validation yeah. to me is kind of the same thing that, you know, when you're not getting that anymore from somebody, then I think it's a problem. And you also said something on yesterday's show about just being really honest about sex too and what you yeah. need more sex than maybe your boyfriend needs. I think you said on one of our rooms before. I, I hope you say that in the room before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do when you, you require more sex or have to masturbate more than, say, your partner? He's comfortable with it. Um, I don't always... I'm not going to do it while he's right beside me, of course. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but he might I, find that's kind of hot. 
he's gonna go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so then you technically could. <laughs> he would never know. <laughs> he's one of those that hard. Um, yeah. In three seconds, he falls asleep. But oh it's, my god! Oh it's my! Cute, yeah. I wish I could. I wish I could do that, but I can't. It's not. It it takes me like. 45 minutes to fall asleep. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's totally comfortable with it. And he would, he he knows it about me and it's something that he's come to accept. So, yeah. I love that. I mean, yeah, I think that's, I think validation can really come into play with sex on um, what your partner's needs, whether things, we were talking a lot about evolution in a relationship over time. Mm -hmm when sex needs can change throughout the course, because why would we ever think that everything's going to be the same at yeah. all times? And that our sex interests and our sex libido mm -hmm. are going to yeah. evolve over time. And, and they are. Yeah. And that's something that kind of worries me. I don't know if worries is the right word, but I, I think about it constantly. Concern. Like, <laughs> <laughs> piques my interest let's say piques that my interest. okay <laughs> ponder like, over at times right yeah <laughs> um it's just how i wonder how my sexual drive is going to change in the future if it's going to get stronger if it's going to wane a little bit i think it's already starting to wane a little bit but well i mean <laughs> you said on one of our shows before i think it was clubhouse um, it was clubhouse you have to yeah, i know what you're gonna say <laughs> <laughs> you have to masturbate how many times a day and eject uh, once a day i have to but it's becoming less and less. And or you get angry. or <laughs> <laughs> Frustrated is the word that I okay, use. Frustrated. Okay, frustrated. <laughs> I don't turn into the Hulk or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Greg says, I have an older sister, our, our, one of our Get Vocal loyal listeners and and viewers uh greg says i have an older sister who is 73 and a very devout christian and totally accepts me for who i am my right. other sister is very religious as well and her son is gay so i'm very fortunate oh that's really great and to have it in the family like that i think i've thought about my family and i'm you know not it's really just my sister and I, but we have a lot of cousins and I'm like, isn't there anybody else that's gay or <laughs> lesbian? Or... <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I really thought that one of my cousins was a lesbian mm. uh, and she turns out she's not. And I really was like waiting for her to come out to me and be like, you know, was it the the shorts <laughs> and, and the constant runs to Home Depot. I'm sorry. I'm being cliche. She built me. She built me so many things and she waxed my car. Car and now, oh my oh, god, wow. those, are, those are horrible stereotypes. Those are not horrible. Every lesbian does that. No, of course not. Yeah. Oh wow, but it turns out she's not, or at least has she's not. not. Okay, yeah. Not, I mean, definitely not. It can. What about validation? Because I wrote this note down about mm -hmm. two other things about validation when either, like a lot of us, for example, have lost weight in. Or, or gained weight, oh. and maybe you've done the work. <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers here. I'm not even. <laughs> oh, you noticed. <laughs> or when? What happens when you've done something to improve yourself on the physical side of it, or mm -hmm. internal side? What if you're working on yourself, and no, is it important for us? Or well, I'll just speak for myself. If I'm working on myself, I often tell people. Because I used to have this side of myself that always had to be right. And it was constant, constant with those, of course, that I loved the most. Mm -hmm. So, and it, and it wasn't always cute as, you know, particularly if alcohol was happening and I had to be right. But I really, really worked really, really hard, really, really a lot. <laughs> and... I don't have to be right anymore. And it's not like this thing for me anymore. But I let people know. 
I'm going to put that to the test. Just you put that to <laughs> I, I have told like my sister and those like I don't and, and they said, you know what? You're right. You don't do that anymore. But I, I let them been, know I wanted that validation. Yeah. Yeah. I had that have that validation that in my mind, at least it made me feel better. But I also internally knew that I had done the work to yeah. work on that. Um, I used to have a need a lot of validation with my body and my look more okay. like my body. It was just this thing. And I think a lot of us in the um, gay world need that oftentimes because we're such surrounded by a, this, the perfect torso or the perfect yep. butt or the perfect, I have to look this way or that way, or I'm aging. And yeah, these I images can, of perfection that are not even attainable by any means. And I don't really suffer from that as much anymore. I mean, I work, I want to look good, but I don't, it's not so much, it's not, it's really nice to hear. But I think I started so young with that as a go-go dancer and being an actor that I got a lot of that needy validation out of my system. Now it's just nice compliments if somebody does yeah. notice, but it wasn't for a long time. It was, I needed that validation. So do you agree that there can be unhealthy validations that we seek? Um, I think so. I think that when it gets to the point of affecting your self-esteem, that's when it tends to be unhealthy. When, uh, when it is purely for just, just to kind of build up your self-esteem, then I think that it can be kind of healthy. But if it starts to deter your self-esteem right. or diminish your self-esteem, that's when it can be. If you don't get those constant validation, that's when it can be really, really harmful to to your your growth as a as a human being. Um, I'm the Instagram king as far as <laughs> <laughs> shirtless pics are, are concerned. Mm -hmm. And I do it mainly because I love my body and I want to share that with the world. <laughs> I love your body too, Cody. Oh, well, thank you, Doc. I love that chest that is on every picture. <laughs> it's one of my best assets. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I just have come to take it with a grain of salt. If I don't get the likes, then I don't get the likes. It's not, it's not something that I do to that it's go if I don't get the likes then it's going to make me feel bad about myself because then I think that's in a, when you're taking the validation and using it in a, in a non productive way. Um, but, when you st when you use it as a force to build up your self esteem and right. make sure that you are, you know, making yourself feel better with the with that validation, that's when it's okay. Right. And a little tidbit on that: um, if you want, if you're looking for those likes, post that thirsty picture of yourself. <laughs> turn it off. Turn Instagram <laughs> off so you allow the algorithm oh, to push. It wants you to notice uh, it's going to try and get you back on there. But while it's doing that, it's pushing the algorithms out there so more people can see it more. If you're always constantly like, let me see, I got another, there's four likes. Oh, there's six likes. Oh, I'm up to yeah. 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I need to start swiping out of it. I'm like responding to everybody like, yes, girl, I look good. Yeah. <laughs> you need to put it down. Go, eat, it your, down. go eat your burger that we know you don't want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Takes us a thousand and prize, likes and the, and the prize. Right. Yes. <laughs> my my milkshake. <laughs> uh, the boys to the yard. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a thousand likes to you, Cody. Greg says, "I love that. That's so great. Yeah. Absolutely." All right. Well, oh, you know what about sex validation? Oh, is it important? For you? Sometimes you don't need. Sometimes validation in, in the bedroom is just like the, your partner's orgasmic relief that screaming or whatever that you don't need that's validation enough you know right? that please the moans and the groans baby that's what I, that's what i look for <laughs> but honestly i've been with people where it's just i can't get it together to release and uh -huh. have that moment it's just 
too much at the moment, but I'm really satisfied. Yeah. I sometimes have to work, make sure that thy partner knows that no, no, I'm validating validating your ticket or your dick yeah. that you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if there was a validation <laughs> for us? <laughs> Let me I validate you before you. you. Yeah, sex it should validation. be a tax podcast. A, a stamp that you put on the dick. I would love that. You've been validated. <laughs> <laughs> you can now leave. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. I think that would be really good. All right. Well, I don't know how much more time we have. We had two more topics, but um, do you, which do you want to? We have to get to thirst trap for sure. We have to get to thirst trap. We don't have time for the the Reddit one, do we? Well, I feel like Reddit we can always do. Yeah, right. Yeah, next week. exactly. It's so, a good one. And yeah. as well, hi, Silas. Um, yes, hi, exactly. Silas. Teddy says do more. <laughs> do more. <laughs> Let's do one quick topic. Which one do you want to do? Jack McEnroe um, or HR? Because it's, to it's topical. It's right. Do you want to leave this topic right off, Cody? Okay. Let's yeah, do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, We're giving you all a little extra. We had a story that we we covered two weeks ago where Jack McEnroe, I got to find the story. Um, yeah, I'll set it up in just a little bit more. He, Jack, <laughs> <laughs> Jack McEnroe, if uh, you all may know, we were talking about him. He's the former Project Runway alumni. He didn't win or anything on his... It was one of the early, early seasons of Project Runway, who's mm -hmm. since gone into... He came out as HIV positive a long time ago, and that's not part of the story. Nothing wrong. That's, yes. you know, which is empowering. I think that he did that and 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 good. Um He's been in a relationship with this guy, Dolph Dietrich, is what we were yes. talking about. And it seems like their store, their relationship, because Dolph Dietrich is a porn star and Jack McEnroth is a porn star as well, or more only fans. He is, he's a porn star. He's been in porn that that has been released on studio studio porn as well. Okay, so I'll tell just the the quick backstory, and then you tell the current story. So okay. what we what we were talking about a couple weeks ago was Dolph Dietrich and Jack McEnroth li living together, both of them doing their porn, but Jack had posted a picture of him like bloodied up and mm -hmm. on all parts of his body, and blamed Dolph at, or insinuated that. Dolph had did this to him and went on to say that Dolph made the uh, the claim, which I think he detracted later on, was that Dolph mm -hmm. Dietrich is obsessed with sleeping with the underage teens, and which yes. is a and a horrible claim to make, particularly exactly. if it's not even true, and exactly. claimed that the domestic violence essentially. They essentially somehow that story faded away when they both retracted their stories and acted like they were all hunky dory. Well, now they're back in the news, Cody. Yes, because Jack McEnroe just three weeks ago he came forward to and he stated that his his ex boyfriend Dolph Dietrich. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Cody. Go he, ahead. Yeah. He retracted all of those statements that he said, and he said that he was lying about him, and that he. He also admitted to suffering from addiction to methamphetamine and large amounts of pills. He said that he also said that his addiction was a result of the pandemic and President Trump's uh, presidency. Right. Which to make that claim in a I mean, I think he was it was his mea culpa in a lot of ways, right, Cody? Mm -hmm. And and kind of asking, I mean, it was rock bottom picture of him, selfie, looking really horrible in a hospital bed at one of the hospitals here, emergency rooms, asking for forgiveness and that he's going to get help. He's going right into a recovery program. And it was kind of a lot to play all this out on. Yeah. In the news like this, what were you? He, go ahead. Go ahead. Said? No, go ahead. I, I said that he was he he apologized profusely to everyone that he hurt and anyone that he disappointed. 
and he is hopeful for so his future of sober living. Yeah, and Dolph Dietrich has went on to say that has a restraining order against him and says he much less shows up at the, his doorstep and he will be right after him. Um, it's so messy and so wrong, but of course you always want people to get the help that they need. If this is true, mm -hmm. he needs yes. serious help. But I don't know about blaming the former president and you know we all did kind of live through this pandemic um, oh yeah where are our coins we need coins <laughs> yeah <laughs> right exactly exactly oh uh, it's it's there's been a lot of stories like this on the porn industry and i can't help but think is was it because of the year that we all had and that life that choice can lead to you know it's it can be great when it's great, but it can also lead to a downward spiral. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually wish... had to go back and listen to what we said on the previous episode. And I'm glad that we didn't like put a stamp, our stamp of approval on what he has come out and said that he what were all falsehoods and, and fallacies. Wait, so, what did we say? We said, we said we didn't give that, him a validation ticket. <laughs> we didn't give him a validation <laughs> ticket. We did not fall for his lies. We yeah. we said that we said that he was that it seemed like he was seeking attention because he did this on uh, on in a public space. Yeah. And right. yeah. So Agreed. we um it just I, this even reinforces it because in his Facebook post he mentions it. He says, I don't put my <laughs> my personal business out there but then he goes to just again put all his personal business out there he goes on to say Dolph Dietrich's given name real name in in the story too oh so, oh yeah, his real his, name okay his yeah. real name no his birth no no name. no no, so no, it's no super messy so I we stand by the, yeah get your act together Mac and Roth <laughs> get yes, it together and, we wish you well in your road to sobriety but get exactly. it together because we're going to keep playing this out on this show if you keep <laughs> you're providing us all of this you're making our job easier over here that's so. what we said too this is good for our show but it's not good mm. for life <laughs> just saying and yes teddy i have a big metal straw nice and long yeah. like i like it because it's time for our thirst trap wednesday situation and Ooh. i put the link in our if you're watching this live i put it in the there in the comment section we want you to weigh in our job is to tell you what was the thirstiest porn pic of the week video or picture and i want to know what yours was first cody okay mine is teddy bryce oh is... wait a minute stop it right there because Greg's i think too. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, how are you going to pick mine? Greg, I love it, Greg. Thank you. We're, we're here. Yeah. Because Teddy Teddy Bryce is laying on the couch. He's, he's ass up. He's got his beautiful tattoos all displayed. And yeah, it's a, it's a gorgeous pick. It really is. I mean, I think you said you would bury your face in it first because it's that. that close to it. It's this huge bulbous, but you can't see his face. I don't know what his face looks like. It sounds like you don't really Does care. Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? Well, I couldn't help but pick this week was the very first pick. And I know you shouldn't. I mean, when you find it and it works, just go with it. It's by a guy named Liam Sky. Liam Sky with a E. And Cody and I were talking about this. He is so adorable. He's got to be in his early 20s for sure. He's got a great dick. He's lying back on, on a bed. He's got pierced nipples mm. that I have been obsessed with. Anybody, when I see they have pierced nipples, and I'm talking about the crossbar ones, I'm immediately drawn to, and I think I want to do it. So he has that. He got me at that. He also got me at his mischievous grin on his face and his adorable, perfect skin and goatee quaffed. 
And I know you don't love his hair. I was just going to say, all of that is nice and wonderful and it's great. But that hair has got to go. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do it. It's a little Jersey Shore, but I love it. It's very Jersey Shore. And the the eyebrows are a little perfectly plucked. But he's... But when you get to those mischievous eyes and that grin on his face, I'm all for it. And I love a smooth chest, but then hairy, hairy legs and bush, too. And I mean, sure, he used Manscaped, our sponsor, which you guys can get 20% <laughs> off by using our promo code tags. But it looks like he used it just enough. He left enough okay. there. And yeah. I actually don't mind hair in the ass. And, he, and you can see he does have that. It's He's perfectly quaffed for me. Um, but yeah, I know Cody doesn't like that hair. He says it's it reminds him of where you're from, the Jersey Shore. Oh, yeah. And I, I told you a story about when I w- was on Grinder before I met my boyfriend and how I would go to visit my mother and I would just look at Grinder down there and just be like, oh, my God, these Jersey boys are actually really, really, really cute. So he reminds me of the Jersey boys. So it reminds me of home. So GTL, a, right? GTL, Jim Tan Laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to GTL tomorrow. All right. Anyways, it's super fun. Oh, who did anybody else like anybody? Yes. Teddy likes Johnny Rapid. And oh no, he said Johnny Rapid is still alive. Oh my God, Teddy! <laughs> Our <laughs> listeners and watchers are worse than us. Shady, <laughs> he is. Shady. He has his own porn studio. Johnny Rapid does. Okay, but he says Angel. I think Angel Rivera is the one that um, he was looking at. I, I I like Angel Rivera a lot. Actually, yeah. he's really hot. And I like and Luke Long as well. That's Aram, nice you're opinion. awfully quiet over there. I, I know. He- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aram, do you have an opinion? In the last second, uh, Silas loves Dante. Uh-oh, Martin. He's the- Dante Martin. I get that confused yeah. with Dante Cole, but yes. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, this has been so much fun as always. We're almost going as over always. our time here. Um, Cody Maurice Doggett. You can always follow Cody Maurice. He's got two of them. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching, KMD Coaching, or on his personal Instagram at Mr. Maurice, Mr. Maurice. And please follow us at Tags Podcast or DM us and ask for sex advice or relationship advice. Look for my segment on Wendy Williams. Watch Woo. Wendy. Ask Wendy, which was ask a lot of Wendy. fun again. Yeah. Um, how you doing? But yes, <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Thanks, guys. Continue get vaccinated because it's a hot vac summer. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>